Welcome everybody to Thold Exclamation Point. I think I'm going to have a short video today. Uh, $270 in sales, but I'm going to post office early. Um, I got some other stuff I need to take care of. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it looks like nine items, um, but a couple of them I do want to talk about uh, to help you guys out, expand your knowledge base. And uh, let's get into it. Uh, first off, baseball glove. I actually don't really sell uh, baseball gloves too often. I don't really go hunting for them. This was submitted by a client. This is a Mizuno glove. Ah, Mizuno glove. These are actually really high-end gloves most of the time. This one happens to be uh, a lower uh, price glove. Um, I don't know how to spot them on site, whether or not they're worth buying. So, um, you know, do your, do your comparable work on eBay and uh, see what they go for. This went for 28, but Mizuno gloves can go for two, three, four hundred dollars. So if you see Mizuno, definitely do it. I, I've had a little bit of luck on older gloves with uh, player signatures in the mitt. Again, they can range from 10 to a couple hundred dollars. Um, obviously more, but you know, the chances of finding that as well. Uh, again, you're just going to put uh, glove, the player name, in your search criteria. Sometimes $25, $35 for a, uh, a glove of a rare player. Um, so keep an eye on that. I, I don't have a lot of information on gloves. I have a number of them for sale, but um, oh, uh, really, really old gloves that aren't particularly collectible. The thing about them is everybody kept their glove. So you're going to find more that aren't worth much than ones that are worth a lot uh, because of that. Everybody kept their glove. Nobody threw out their glove. You know, just because it's from the 40s and the 50s doesn't mean it's worth all that much. So... Do your work, do your research before you commit to buy. Uh, next up is our beautiful sale. This is a, a sports specialty single script Minnesota Timberwolves uh, snapback hat. Um, extremely rare, uh, extremely collectible. Um, these are draft hats um, and have a, a very robust collector's market. We got uh, 130, $132 for it. Um, there's one that has a border around. You call that a double line script, and this would be a single line. Um, keep an eye out, sports specialties. Um, there are remakes of this style in other brands. They do not go for as much. They are not collected um, the way sports specialties is. Um, so definitely keep your eye out for that brand when you're out hunting. Another NASCAR sold for 12. Um, I don't know, we're <laughs> three sold out of 70. So we'll, we'll see if if um, I would say if 15 were to sell in the first 30 days, I would consider that you know pretty good and. Uh, definitely worth keeping an eye out for these. It's, you know, uh, something to add to the learning base. Uh, we had one, the Smoky Collection sale. So the four card lot. Um, nobody amazing on here. Uh, so I'll just show them real quick. Pedro Santana. I'm getting a call. Oh well, they're just going to have to deal with uh, leaving a message. Uh... Dave Maurer, UD, Vintage. There we go. All right. <laughs> we got an Ismail Villegas, Just, and a Todd Rizzo. Uh, that's a 97 a Nashville Sound set, which is a uh, smaller minor league set. Uh, that four went for 21. We sold another one of these uh, old uh, Western uh, Western oil prints of Jim Cott. Uh, this one's in very low grade. Um, looks like it was taped. 
to a wall and left some uh, uh, damage on the back. Uh, 12 for this. My guess, in mint condition, you can probably get 20, 25. There's not a whole lot of them for sale. So, you see them, they're nice art prints. They would frame up real well. Uh, two more items. We have a really nice press photo. That's uh, Earl Campbell. And then you have Matt Blair and Scott Studwell in the photo as well. This is a really nice one to get signed. Um, I, I don't I don't know if uh, the buyer is going to get it autographed, but <clears throat> it would be a really great photo to get autographed. There's a, there's a nice spot right here. Um, probably in blue would be uh, your best bet. And last up is... We sold a 1982 calendar. We had a number of these, all with different covers. Uh, $12 ship. The reason why I wanted to show this, though, is if you go, there is a market for older calendars. This one sold because it's just really good photos. Um, uh, uh, almost 40 years old. Um, that being said, you can sell old calendars. Um, which is not something I, I do. This just happened to be part of a consignment lot. Um, but you can look for what's called repeating years. So, for example, this 1982 calendar in the year 2020 will actually match, um, will match up perfectly with that year. So, uh, a calendar from 1982 could sell very well in late 2019. Because people, uh, especially if you got some real pop culture type calendar, you know, Mario can calendar or uh, uh, just something from a TV show or something, people really like buying them and they'll 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 pay for them. So uh, there's a website I can't remember the name of it. I should have wrote it down. Um, but if you Google repeating years uh, or repeating year calendar, um, I think it's called something like timeanddate.com. What I'll do is I will put that link in this video um, so you guys can just click on it. And, you know, if you're out and you find a big bunch of calendars, go to that website. And if that repeating year is coming up in the next two years or three years, and, it's, and they're cheap and it's a cool subject matter, um, you might be able to get a real nice flip. Um, to just kind of hold it on to them until maybe six months prior. So maybe the June of the year um, that that calendar is going to be uh, attributed to. So that's what I got for you today. Hope you learned a little something. I should be back tomorrow. And thanks for watching.